Welcome to Micron's hardware. When I was testing Machinist X99K9 motherboard with i7-5820K, I also happened to have on my hands Maxun B560M Challenger with Core i3-10100F. These two combos are very similar, but also very different. That's why I have decided to make a simple comparison between these two CPUs and these two motherboards and see what we have got. Back in the days, Core i7-5820K was a luxury gaming CPU because the regular desktop platform had up to four cores. On the other hand, Core i3-10100F is probably the cheapest and the most budget-friendly option for gaming computers right now. The CPU has only four cores, eight threads, and no ability to overclock. Nevertheless, the old i7 and the new Core i3 are costing about the same when you take into consideration the motherboard pricing, the memory pricing, the CPU cooler pricing, and the power supply pricing. That's exactly why I thought these two budget combos would be very interesting to compare in games. Before I go into the test results, a few words about the tested configuration. So Core i3-5820K can be overclocked and it was tested on Machinist X99K9 motherboard. This motherboard uses X99 chipset and with BIOS from BIOS iEngineer I can overclock my i7. The maximum stable overclock I was able to achieve on this motherboard is 4.3 GHz on all 6 cores and 3.5 GHz on uncore or CPU cache. For the memory I have 16GB, 2 modules 8GB each, Samsung DDR4 2133 ECC registered memory. The memory I was able to overclock to DDR4 2400 CL14. With Core i3-10100 I also use a Chinese motherboard which is Maxun B560M Challenger. For the memory I have uh, also 16GB, 2 modules 8GB each, G-Skill DDR4 3200CL14. Here, some of you may think that this is an unfair comparison because with Core i3 I use a much better, much faster RAM compared to Core i7. And you might be right, but the reality is not that simple. With Machinist X99K9, if I use my G-Skill modules, I cannot achieve anything faster than DDR4 2400CL14. First, the motherboard simply does not work with anything faster than DDR4 2400 if I install Core i7-5820K. And second, the motherboard does not support any memory voltage regulations, thus we are limited to 1.2 volts. With this voltage, my G-Skill modules are not able to get any tighter timings than DDR4 2400-CL14. At this speed, Samsung ECC registered memory is providing slightly better results than G-Skill modules. That's why I have decided to use Samsung ECC registered modules with i7 and G-Skill modules with Core i3. Another question is why Core i7-5820K was limited to only two memory modules instead of four to utilize all four memory channels of the X99 LGA2011 version 3 platform. The answer for this question you can find in my Machinist X99K9 review, and the link will be available either here or here. All other components in both of the systems were exactly the same. For the GPU, this time I use AMD RX Vega 64. It is a bit more appropriate GPU for the CPU of this caliber, while AMD RX 6800 XT is a complete overkill with i3-10100F or i7-5820K. Then I have two SSDs, two 40GB as a system drive and two terabyte as the games drive. All of these components were powered up by EVGA Supernova 750 P2 power supply. Let's start with 8064 memory benchmark. Here we can see that i3, which has much faster memory, providing significantly better results when it comes to the memory latency. Memory read, write, and copy speeds were also slightly better with Core i3. After all, DDR4 3200CL14 is better than DDR4 2400CL14. If I would be able to use all four memory channels of my i7, then read, write, and copy speed would be better with the i7, while the memory latency would still be better with the Core i3. A few synthetic benchmarks. As expected, overclocked i7-5820K to 4.3 GHz is able to roughly match single-threaded performance of i3-10100F. When it comes to the multi-core performance, uh, Core i7, which has six cores, is getting a convincing win over Core i3, which has only four cores. I really doubt that any of you would be buying Core i3-10100 or Core i7-5820K for some sort of a heavy-duty application. Most of you would probably buy these CPUs for gaming computers, and that's why let's go into the gaming benchmarks. 
For this comparison, I have got only 10 games, but each game I have tested two times, with the maximum quality preset and the high or medium quality preset depends on the game. Thus, we will see how these two CPUs compare one to another when we are using different graphical quality presets. Some of the results are very unexpected, but I have checked and double-checked that the results are correct, thus I am confident. If you think that I have done something wrong, you are welcome to provide a better suggestion or do your own tests. But before I start, I need to mention that I have limited my AMD RX Vega 64 to 90% TDP. This was done because AMD RX Vega 64 reference design card is a very loud and I simply could not stand the noise while doing the benchmarks. According to my test, 90% TDP restriction almost does not affect the performance. But if you have RX Vega 64 and you would like to compare your results with my results, please keep this in mind that my results are limited to 90% TDP. Now let's start with Far Cry New Dawn as the first tested game. Using high graphical preset, both of the CPUs are delivering almost identical performance, while Core i3 is just a tiny bit faster. What is interesting is that if I switch to the ultra graphical preset, then Core i3 10100 beats Core i7 5820K by 10 FPS, which equals to about 15%. With Core i3, RX Vega renders 63 and 88 FPS, while with Core i7, it is only 54 and 78 FPS. I don't really have an explanation for this behavior, but maybe with Ultra Graphical Preset, Far Cry New Dawn is rendering more physical objects, which is providing more CPU load, and in this case the difference between i7 and i3 grows up. Logically, this difference is supposed to shrink when you are switching from high to Ultra Graphical Preset. In Far Cry 6, both of the CPUs are going in neck to neck, here i7 wins a little bit by minimal FPS and Core i3 has a slight win when comparing average FPS values. Assassin's Creed Odyssey gives us another interesting example. Here the performance is almost identical when using a high graphical preset, but switching to the ultra graphical preset, Core i3 is again a bit faster. The difference is just a few FPS, but still it is weird to see that increasing GPU load is increasing the difference between the two CPUs. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a very CPU demanding game, but somehow Quad Core Core i3 10100F still manages to beat i7 5820K, which has 6 cores. The gap between the CPUs is about 7 FPS, and that roughly equals to 10%. Watch Dogs Legion is another very CPU demanding game that also gives us interesting results. Core i7 is up to 7 FPS or about 10% faster when using high graphical preset, but if I switch to the ultra graphical preset, Core i3 takes the first place. The difference is just 3 FPS or about 6%, but it is still very interesting to see that with high graphical preset i7 takes the first place, with ultra graphical preset i3 takes the first place. Again, I don't really have an explanation for this behavior, it is what it is. I have checked or double checked, the numbers are correct. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege does not have any surprises for us, both of the CPUs i3 and i7 are limiting RX Vega 64 in this game. The performance is almost identical between all four tested configurations. F1 2021 usually prefers high IPC and low memory latency, but still, in this comparison, 6-core Core i7 5820K comes on top. Here, I was expecting Core i3 10100F with its much faster memory to beat Core i7, but it didn't happen. i7 5820K is a few FPS faster than Core i3 10100. Shadow of the Tomb Raider can utilize multiple CPU cores, but still, 6-core i7 is not able to beat quad-core Core i3. In this game, Core i3 10100 is about 4 FPS faster in both tested graphical presets. Horizon Zero Dawn is another well-optimized and very CPU-demanding game. Still, 6 Core i7 fails to beat Quad Core i3. This time, Core i3 10100F is about 8 FPS or roughly 10% faster than Core i7 5820K. Immortals Phoenix Rising. This game can use all CPU cores, but at the same time the performance is horrible. Both of the CPUs are demonstrating almost identical FPS. Still, using ultra graphical preset, we can see that Core i3 10100F was yet again slightly faster than Core i7 5820K. If I combine all these results, we can see that the performance between both of the CPUs is very similar. Even though the performance difference is very negligible, Core i3 10100 is still the obvious winner, because the price between these two combos will be about the same. 
Why would you buy an outdated X99 platform if you can buy Core i3 10100F on LGA 1200 platform for about the same money? This is a much newer, much better platform and it also consumes significantly less electricity. For the power consumption measurements, I have done my usual testing, running Assassin's Creed Valhalla benchmark where both of the CPUs are delivering roughly identical performance. Here, system with Core i7 15-20K consumes about 410 watts of electricity. Switching to Core i3 10100F and this system consumes only 350 watts. The difference of 60 watt is rather significant in my opinion. And this is probably all I can tell about this little comparison between Core i3 10100F and Core i7 15-20K. I hope this comparison is going to help you make your decision if you want to buy X99 or LJ1200 platform. In my case, these two combos would cost about the same – Machinist X99K9 with i7-5820K or Maxun B560M plus i3-10100F. Thus, if we have better performance, better power efficiency and the same price, it is obvious that I am picking i3-10100F. In your case, you need to always do your calculations, see what local options you have, see what you can find on AliExpress, maybe you have some promo codes, or maybe you can get some discounts somewhere. With this, I'm going to finish the video. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it, bye bye!